The news at noon starts right now. A man wanted for murder is still on the run. This noon, Seguin police are renewing their call for tips, hoping that information can help. Police accused 38-year-old Norman Trey Powell of shooting and killing Jerome Roundtree back on July 2nd. Roundtree was taken to a hospital here in San Antonio where he later died. Powell was initially charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, but that was upgraded to murder. If you can help police find him, call Seguin police at 830-379-2123 or Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers at 1-800-403-TIPS. The Uvalde Police Department could be growing. Tonight's city council agenda includes an item to discuss the creation of an assistant police chief position within the department. This comes after the intense scrutiny law enforcement agencies have faced following that deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. Just last night, safety was still at the top of mind during a school board meeting in Uvalde. Dr. Hal Harrell, superintendent for Uvalde CISD, laid out some significant safety changes for the district, and that includes adding fencing and security cameras, as well as securing entrances and updating doors and locks. Ballistic film glass, that could save a lot of lives. It can contact the law enforcement and it could save people from getting shot with bullets. Parents can track the status of the district's project on its website. Families can apply for their students to learn virtually. Application is open tomorrow. The deadline to apply is the 31st. As the first day of classes approaches for more students, districts are dealing with a nationwide teacher shortage. It's happening here at home as well. Northside ISD has over 200 education positions still open. San Antonio ISD is trying to fill 80 positions, while Northeast ISD scrambles to get 180 teachers hired. A survey by the Texas State Teachers Association says the two biggest reasons teachers leave the job lingering stress from the pandemic and inadequate pay. This new school year, dozens of Harlandale ISD students will have free Wi-Fi at home thanks to a district program. It's a story we have been following for months. The school district partnered with the city to install cell towers around the community. That way students can have access to the internet for schoolwork. Tiffany Huertas explains how it's helping kids bridge the digital divide. It's going to be helpful for me and my brother because he does school work and he gets home. He likes to go like do more work. And then I'm also going to use it because if I can't do it at school, like I'll finish it at home. Students like Barbara Hernandez will be able to do their schoolwork online from home thanks to a district program that's been in the works for about two years. So one of the things that we set out to do um, was really break down the school walls and just, just extend the education to the homes, you know, provide access where maybe there was none. Dozens of students receive these routers that communicate to cell towers placed around the district and provides wireless internet at home. It is filtered access and so um, it's not about, you know, Netflix or, or anything like that. It's for, for student work. 14 cell towers were installed. We are 14 square miles of excellence as we like to call ourselves and so we have one at about every mile which gives the district about 90 to 95 percent coverage you know for for our families. The district will be collecting data to find out if students are actually using the devices and how it's helping. Mirna says if the Harlandale project has a positive impact the city may want to expand into other areas. We have wonderful programs um, that our curriculum department has put in um, online resources, um, software programs and such. And this just ensures that the kids have access to them when, when they're at home. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Bernie ISD launching a new safety campaign. The goal is to encourage students and staff to report dangerous or suspicious activity. The campaign includes a PSA, posters, as well as the campus morning news shows and announcements. There will be a QR code on the video and posters leading people directly to the anonymous reporting page on the district website. Once reported, school officials will immediately begin investigating the activity. Police say a man accused of stealing more than $400 worth of beer on the southwest side may also be connected to another robbery. SAPD charged Hector del Rio with aggravated robbery. Back in June, he made multiple trips in and out of a store near Old Pearsall Road and Loop 410. 
Officers say each time he went in, he grabbed beer and didn't pay for the items. When an employee checked on what was happening, Del Rio flashed a gun at the worker. That's according to the arrest paperwork, which also says Del Rio was also identified as a suspect in another robbery of a store located on Medina Base Road. Crews braving this South Texas summer to do some road work and some bridge repairs. That means road closures. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavasso shows us where it's all happening and how you can plan ahead. Expect to see some closures throughout the month of August. There is plenty of work taking place in and around the Alamo City. Let's first start here off US 281 on the north side of San Antonio. Bridge work taking place. Now, this does start Wednesday, August 10th. Should be taking place from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So that's for those late night owls or those early bird commuters. Full closure of the intersection at Overlook Parkway. So expect to see some closures during that time. We will continue to see work over here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. Road work, according to text dot. Now this should start Sunday, August 7th and should be wrapping up on Monday, August 22nd, but it will take place overnight. So make sure to plan ahead eight in the evening to five in the morning, alternating main lane closures in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. One last look here at State Highway 181 road repairs where it will be current up until Friday, August 26th. That will take place during the day from nine in the morning to four in the afternoon. That's when drivers can expect alternating lane closures in both directions from I-37 to Wilson County line. But of course, that information along with other construction spots posted on our website, grab those phones and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of all the closures taking place in and around our area. Thank you, Stephen. The Biden administration is set to announce a new strategy to split monkeypox vaccine doses in hopes of vaccinating up to five times as many people against the virus. Typically, the vaccines are injected into the fatty tissue under the skin. They would now be injected under the top layer of the skin. The change in the injection method would maximize the immune reaction generated by the vaccine and allow U.S. officials to only administer one fifth of the original dose. The federal government must still take several steps before the vaccine change is legally allowed. Across the country, there are over 8,000 cases of monkeypox. Here in Bear County, Metro Health is reporting 16. Now to the extreme weather across the country. Millions of Americans are under heat alerts. The Northeast getting hit especially hard. This as parts of the Midwest and South continue cleaning up after those big historic floods. ABC's Rainer Roy has the latest. More than 46 million people in the U.S. are under heat alerts. In Boston, at least five straight days of 95 plus degrees, the hottest stretch since 1944. I have to go to work. I got to go to court. I just hope that it doesn't show. In Massachusetts, more than half the state in a severe drought. The lesson there is that, you know, heat is really the great equalizer that even folks who are, you know, healthy and relatively healthy can, can get into a little bit of trouble. Farmers saying they're entering disaster mode, some moving crops indoors for the first time in a hundred years. Meanwhile, in Denver, a strong storm dumping several inches of rain, some drivers stranded. We just assisted a patient out of the water, checking another vehicle for a party possibly trapped. A similar story in California. It's Death Valley enduring what weather experts are calling a once in a thousand years event. More than six months worth of rain falling in just hours, stranding about 1,000 people. It sounded like the, the world was ending and then, you know, just this rushing water everywhere in, in a place that's usually absolutely bone dry. It was, uh, it, it was pretty incredible. President Joe Biden declaring a disaster declaration in Kentucky, the state's worst flooding event ever, claiming more than three dozen lives. The president visiting families Monday and promising federal assistance. It would take a while to get through this, but I promise you we're not leaving. This week, the Senate passed the Inflation Reduction Act, a package designed in part to address climate change, which experts say is driving this extreme weather. It now moves on to the House for consideration. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. It is going to be hot this week, but we're holding out hope for some rain chances by the end of the work week. We look at that forecast for you coming up. EUTSA has a huge advantage before this even gets the season even gets started. We're going to let you know what that is coming up in sports.
Walking is one of the best forms of exercise and it can also be good for your soul if you do it with a buddy or two or maybe even a hundred. How's that sound? In today's new you, producer Alyssa Medina introduces us to San Antonio's newest walking club that sparked the interest of hundreds of women, all thanks to the power of social media. We're all here to support each other. Everyone goes in their own pace, like not a running club. It's just simple walking. You have your fast walkers in the front and then your sore walkers, which that's me. <laughs> I'll be in the back. I'm, I guess I semi-active. I've been trying to get out and be more active. Victoria and Andrea have been friends for a few years and would often take walking breaks from work together. So when they came across City Girls Who Walk on TikTok, New York was actually like the first one who made it. They decided to start the San Antonio chapter. At the beginning, we were just four girls and then we made that TikTok right after that walk and I just did it for like literally four seconds and it went over half a million views and then our third walk was over 300 people wow we did not think it was gonna be this big maybe just a couple girls a small little walking group so it's kind of cool to see everybody really loving it while they originally set out to find a few walking buddies it's become more of a safe space for women to get out of their comfort zone. There are a lot of girls that are coming from out of state that like don't know anyone and just want to come and be able to make friends. Or some girls like have um, social anxiety that they just want to be able to get out of that. And they can do that with a little help from the group. I like to do a little icebreaker and just share something with the person that's next to you. We also have walk leaders. So they kind of help also like go in between everyone and kind of socialize. Also part of this was we wanted to explore or San Antonio. I'm a San Antonio native, so I actually haven't explored a lot of trails and park. Each week, the city girls venture out to a different trail on a different side of town, and exploring a new area is a lot less scary in a group setting. Women have many stories that they walk alone and don't feel safe around the area, so being able to walk in a group, I think, makes them feel more safe, and that's our, also in our intention. So it could also not only be like a walking club, but a social club as well. For new you, Alyssa in Medina. Okay, one more. Everybody wave. KSAT 12 News. So you saw this story first on KSAT News Now at 11 a.m. today, and the city girls have 10 walks under their belt, but last week they decided to switch things up and opened, um, opted for having a summer picnic instead. You can stay up to date on their walk details by following their TikTok and Instagram pages. We've got a link on our website, KSAT.com. That's a lot of ladies out there walking. A lot, honey. I wonder how hot it was. Well, at least today, not too bad. Not yet. You went for a morning walk. Right now, uh, yeah, these afternoons. All, although, you know, we were talking about this at uh, KSAT News Now, at least, yeah, we're so used to these triple digit numbers. Now, when we're in the upper 90s, it doesn't feel that bad outside, comparatively speaking. Uh, the aquifer is down half a foot today to 630.9, and your pollen count's just mold zero at 400, so we're still doing well there. Could we finally get some decent rain around the area? We got a little bit yesterday. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Dude, it's hot. Dude, it's hot. That's all I got today. <laughs> We've built up endurance, though. I mean, Dude. have we? Yeah. We, yeah. Triple digits. Well, you and go we out in it every right day, now. so you, you're getting used to it. But some mm -hmm. people that don't go out in it, you I'll walk take out there. this weather, last night's weather, this week's weather. Mm hmm over what we've experienced. I agree with that. I agree with that. With, you know, the evenings haven't been so bad. We got the outflow battery last night, a couple storms here and there, helped with the temperatures. It wasn't as bad. Still hot, but not as bad. We got to talk about the lake levels, though. If you have been on casehead.com, you might have saw the story about Canyon Lake having to close three of the county boat ramps because of lake levels. So let's check in and see where we are. Uh, Medina, obviously in bad shape. 10% down 71 feet, down 33 feet since last year. Amistad, we've been talking about that over the last month or so. It is also in bad shape, 31% full. It's down 17 feet over the year. Choke, Travis, they continue to fall as well. 52% for Travis Buchanan's at 67%. Now these tend to be more steady level lakes and we know Canyon's fairly steady level, but it has come down. And during the drought we saw, the last drought, we saw it come down into the 80% range. That's where we are now, 89%. And it's uh, down three feet since last year. So we'll have to watch those numbers carefully as this drought continues to hold on. And when you look at the departure from normal rainfall, meaning where we are compared to 
the average rainfall for this time of year. San Antonio is now nearly 14 inches below average. That's a huge number. It's the biggest deficit in the state. Waco is not far behind us, but you can see most of the state really does need some rain. The one exception is Brownsville, where they're about average, but everyone else is below average rainfall. And I guess that probably comes as no surprise. We've been there, done that, lived this summer. We know how brutal it's been. Uh, live radar shows we've got a few showers here along the coast. They haven't really made much progress inland, and I don't know that they will. There's an outside chance we see a shower here around San Antonio, but I don't think it's like yesterday. If we see anything, it's going to be one or two showers at best. Time lapse shows we had some of those morning clouds. They've broken up into uh, partly cloudy conditions now. We can see some blue sky out there, 89 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at about 7. And that cloud cover, it's pretty expansive, although as you go out west, you'll run into mostly sunny skies. You Valde, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you're seeing a lot of sun. And then you see some of those showers that have developed around Victoria. Temperature wise, starting to see 90s pop up now. 90 at Stinson, 91 Castroville, 91 Rio Medina, 90 in Bandera as well. And dew points are close to 70. This is going to be a similar trend to the last couple of days where dew points fall into the low 60s by the afternoon, but there's enough there for heat index. Feels like 94 at this hour here in San Antonio. Feels like 95 in New Braunfels. Feels like 92 in Seguin. And by the afternoon, we will see heat index values up above 100, as high as 103 in a few spots with an air temperature close to 99. So this is still, you know, not fun uh, as far as uh, being outside. As we look at the big picture here, you'll notice we've got some showers and storms around Oklahoma and Arkansas and then some rain in the Gulf. We're watching both of these areas because these are two little disturbances that are going to kind of merge as they work into Texas. We're on the edge of this ridge of high pressure. And as these two uh, areas, these two disturbances move in, we should get some slightly better rain chances. So today it's just a 10% chance. There's not much there. And as we head into tomorrow, about a 20% chance. We'll watch for some outflow boundaries to the north. If we see anything tomorrow, it's going to be late in the day, probably the evening, if some of these outflow boundaries work in. But it's Thursday where we're going to see about a 30% chance of rain as some deeper moisture works into the area, and we'll keep that going on Friday too. So here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. 99 today, 100 on Wednesday. Don't bet on much rain next couple of days. Uh, even Thursday and Friday, yes, the rain chances are a little bit better, but this is not drought-busting rain. These are quick-moving showers that aren't going to amount to much. 20% chance Saturday. Good news here is we do see temperatures come down with the added cloud cover Thursday and Friday but we'll probably get right back into the triple digits Sunday and Monday. But a little break. We need it. A little break, and you know we're getting closer, closer to fall. All right. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. The Cowboys have a major flaw they are trying to deal with. We'll tell you what that is coming up. And one of the greatest of all time, ready to hang up a racket. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. Of course, it's always three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. And the Cowboys' worst phase, special teams, especially at kicker. So bad, they brought in four kickers to work out in Oxnard before they break camp tomorrow and head to Denver for shared workouts with the Broncos. Undrafted free agent John Garibay out of Texas Tech. Oh, that hurts. He's struggling. And Larim Hajulua is the only other option Dallas will give former Cowboys kicker Brett Mayer another chance after his career numbers were 77% of his field goals over 96% of his extra points with his longest at 63 yards. Mayer will be joined by Cole Murphy of the USFL who made almost 92% of his field goal attempts, 82% of his extra points and his longest at 60. Matt Amendola and JJ Molson have also been invited so what will it be like to have shared practices with the Broncos on Thursday before facing them in their preseason opener Saturday night? It'll be good to, uh, you know, get out there against another team. Um, so just get out there against another defense, uh, defensive scheme and, uh, you know, compete against some other guys. Once again, the Cowboys face the Broncos Saturday night, 8 o'clock, San Antonio time in Denver. And the UTSA Roadrunners are now less than a month away from kicking off their season on Saturday, September the 3rd in the Alabama Dome against Houston. And you talk about a big plus to start the season. Frank Harris under center once again. Harris is on multiple preseason award watch lists after a breakout year in 2021. So how's the former Clemens quarterback approaching his role as a team leader this year? Still the same thing, you know, uh, be a man of integrity, lead by example. Everything I say I have to do myself. 
um, and just hold everybody accountable as well as they hold me accountable. And uh, just blessed to be the quarterback for this team. He, he holds himself differently. And uh, he's not perfect. Nobody is. So I don't want anybody to, to say that because he's not. But he just, he's just different. He's, he's very mature. He's, he's an old soul. And tennis superstar Sarita Williams says she doesn't like the word retirement. She prefers the phrase evolve away from tennis. She's announcing that the countdown has begun and it looks like the U.S. Open will be her final tournament. Williams has won 23 Grand Slams. She's 41. She's one of the greatest athletes of all time, much less on the tennis court. But she said in a Vogue article and on Instagram, she's ready for another child, work on business interests and spiritual goals. The U.S. Open Tennis Tournament starts August 29th. How lucky are we to see one of the greatest of all time on the tennis court? 41, and she can still hit it. Exactly. So. But, I mean, she has sacrificed so much of her yep. personal life to, you know, be a star out there at the court. So good for her. All right, extreme heat can cause problems for pets and people, but did you know it may also cause trees to seemingly explode? An arborist breaks down how heat tore apart a centuries-old oak tree in the next half hour. And development of a Lyme disease vaccine making progress. However, now a drug company needs help from 6,000 people as it sets its sights on FDA approval. And kids are heading back to school in the pandemic era program providing free lunch for all has come to an end. That might mean it's time to break out the lunch box with the cost of groceries going up, going up. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz talks to Erin Chase, the $5 dinner mom, to get her tips and tricks to pack lunch on a budget. Pfizer is in its third phase of a clinical trial focused on a vaccine that could fight the tick-borne Lyme disease. The drug maker is now looking for 6,000 people over the age of five to be part of the study. Those who participate will either get three doses of VLA-15 and a booster or a placebo. If the trial produces positive results, Pfizer says it may seek approval from the Food and Drug Administration and the European Medicines Agency within the next three years. This is the only Lyme vaccine currently in the stage of development. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says more than 400,000 Americans need treatment for Lyme disease each year. <coughs> Excuse me. The Pentagon announcing $1 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. The package, the largest single drawdown of U.S. arms and equipment since August of 2021. It focuses heavily on ammunition and weapons, including high mobility artillery rocket systems, 75,000 plus rounds of ammo, C4 explosives and 50 armored medical treatment vehicles. Meanwhile, Russia says there will be a temporary halt for U.S. inspections of its nuclear weapon sites under the START Treaty. The foreign ministry in Moscow says this is because of what it described as unequal access. The new START treaty limits both nations to deploying a set of amount of nuclear warheads, as well as 18 annual on-site inspections. And the FBI has searched former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate as part of an investigation into whether he took classified records from the White House to his Florida residence. It marks an escalation of law enforcement scrutiny over the former president. Trump says agents opened up a safe at his home and describes their work as an unannounced raid that he linked to prosecutorial misconduct. The FBI and Justice Department have not confirmed the search. Attorney General Merrick Garland has been tight-lipped about any investigations related to Trump, but last month he did make clear that no one is immune from prosecution. No person is above the law in this country. Nothing stops us. No per I don't know how to maybe I'll say that again. No person is above the law in this country. In January, the National Archives retrieved 15 boxes worth of White House documents from Mar-a-Lago with Trump's cooperation. Mexico will attempt to send an aquatic drone into a collapsed coal mine where 10 miners have been trapped since last week. Images from the drone could help authorities decide whether to send in divers without putting them at risk. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador says progress has been made in terms of removing water to get to the miners. Now, 25 pumps were working to remove water from the flooded shafts. At one point, the water that was 111 feet deep is now between 55 and 78 feet deep. The mine collapsed last Wednesday with 15 miners inside. Five managed to escape with injuries. 
And take a look at this. Some communities wading through water. Heavy rains and storms tore through parts of Maryland on Monday. It caused some flash flooding in Prince George's County. Cars got trapped in the water and firefighters helped with two water rescues. And when it comes to hot, dry weather, we've seen it all here in South Texas, but this might be a new one, exploding trees. Communities in Oregon are experiencing extreme heat, which they say is causing trees to explode. That's exactly what experts say may have happened to a more than 200 year old oak tree in the Portland area. The tree looks like it pulled itself apart. One of the branches that came crashing down estimated to weigh roughly 30,000 pounds. Fortunately, no one was hurt and property damage was minimal. However, it was a regular, regularly maintained healthy tree. An arborist says the intense heat was still too much for old oak. And that tends to cause thermal changes inside the tree in the wood tissues and also builds build up of gases inside the tree that can be explosive uh, and sudden. Yeah, Dallas says there's not much neighbors could have done to save the tree. Sometimes arborists can brace a tree's possible failure points, but that's not foolproof. Too hot. Yeah, to I don't handle know. for that. Tree. Have we seen any exploding trees around here? Justin, have we seen any? Exploding I don't think so. Not That's yet. my knowledge. But you know, the tree in my front yard, the the after the winter storm in 2021, and then paired with this heat, all all the bark has come off. I I don't know if I'll be able to save it. So the the, oh. the heat and then the freeze from 2021 has done a lot to our trees around here. They've had, had to go through a lot. So it's an interesting story though. Uh, temperatures around the state right now. Well, we're sitting in the upper 80s here in San Antonio, 90s in places like San Angelo, Abilene, Waco. Dallas is already up to 96. Hot there, but 80s out across parts of West Texas. As we zoom out and look at the rest of the country, we tend to be one of the warmer spots. Of course, Las Vegas is at 91. Pretty cool weather up across the Pacific Northwest after they have been dealing with all that heat. It has cooled down now, 68 Portland, 64 in Seattle. And then right now it is 95 in New York City. So there's some big time heat there and some concerns. They are six degrees warmer than we are this hour. And the radar and satellite shows there is some rain across parts of the Gulf Coast. We noticed some rain out across parts of Arkansas. And some of that activity is trying to make its way into our neck of the woods. We hope by Thursday and Friday. In the meantime, 96 by 2 o'clock, 98 by 3 p.m. We're up around 99 today. It'll feel hotter than that. 10% chance rain, small chance for a shower. That goes through about 7 p.m. And then look for a warm and humid evening. Temperatures in the upper 80s at 10 p.m. Guys. Thank you, Justin. An area school district is implementing a new program this new school year to support students academically, socially, and emotionally. Pleasanton ISD is adding social emotional learning, or at SEL, and they hope it will help students manage their feelings, show empathy for others, and much more. Tiffany Huertas explains the impact it could have on the students. They're going to give the kids tools to help them be successful, how to cope, how to deal, how to manage their time. As the new school year begins, a focus at Pleasanton ISD is on social and emotional health. School counselor Megan Stewart says their new program will give students the tools they need to deal with life situations. Especially after the pandemic, kids were isolated, kids were at home, now coming back to school, they have to readjust socially. And this program really does help kids um, talk to their teachers, talk to their peers. The district has invested in a social emotional learning curriculum called Seven Mindsets. All our students in pre-kinder through 12th grade will be utilizing the uh, curriculum. Pleasanton ISD spent over $40,000 on the curriculum. Okay. We use funds out of the um, elementary and secondary relief funds that were given to us by um, the federal government to be used for these purposes. School staff, including seventh grade teacher Lynette Thornton, was trained on this new program. It does give the kids, I think, the tools to understand that they can control how they feel about situations. It's not what happens to them, but how they deal with it. As part of this program, students will express how they feel in the classroom, and they'll also have an opportunity to write down their feelings. Within the next two or three years of seeing this program implemented, the kids are going to be very successful on advocating for themselves, taking ownership of their schoolwork, taking pride in themselves. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. A little less pain at the pump for drivers. Gas prices continue to fall and they could go even lower. We'll tell you why still ahead.
An instant messaging app is announcing updates, a look at the security-based changes that are coming to WhatsApp after the break. WhatsApp says it will soon allow users to prevent some people from knowing when they are checking messages. People will also be able to leave groups without letting other channels know it. The company says the changes are part of its efforts to keep messages, quote, as secure as face-to-face -face conversations, end quote. This comes after some of WhatsApp's billion users voiced privacy concerns when the company announced a policy that said some information is shared with Facebook, which has had data-related privacy problems in the past. Officials say that these new protective changes to WhatsApp will be available within the next few weeks. And the national average price for a gallon of gasoline dropped again overnight to $4.03. That's according to AAA. The drop represents more than 50 days of decline and signals the price could soon drop below $4. This would be the first time in five months. Also helping drive down prices, demand for gasoline in general. It's dropping according to the Energy Information Administration. Prices skyrocketed early this year. We all felt it and it was in response to an increase in the cost of crude oil, all due to factors like diminishing U.S. refining capacity and an embargo on the import of Russian oil in response to the war in Ukraine. I just like saying, what's up? I know, it's so, WhatsApp. It's WhatsApp. Well, that's Not close. what's up. But I just, you know, <laughs> well, I'm going to change the name of the company and say, what's up? All right, that billionaire. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. You do it well. I did. I like that. All right, okay, partly cloudy. Sky What's up with the weather? <laughs> <laughs> partly cloudy, 89 so far today. 77 was <laughs> the low this morning. Records are 106 and 67. We'll be back to show you the forecast. Your top headlines from Cheddar News. Gregory and Travis McMichael, the father and son convicted in the 2020 killing of Ahmad Aubrey, were sentenced Monday to life in prison on federal hate crimes along with attempted kidnapping and weapon use charges. William Roddy Bryan Jr., the third man involved in the shooting, was given 35 years. Tyson food shares fell 10% on Monday as the U.S. meat processor reported weaker than expected quarterly earnings, warning of supply issues and low demand for high-priced beef. Tyson said it raised the price to offset surging inflation. Global poultry prices reached an all-time high in July. And there's trouble brewing in the craft beer industry. A shortage of carbon dioxide, which puts the fizz in your beer, is hurting small breweries. Supply chain issues and contamination at a major supplier are forcing some craft brewers to cut back. Large beer companies make their own CO2, so they are largely unaffected. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Shannon Lanier in New York. In unison, it was like, oh, no. Oh. On the, the, never mind. On the stuff, we all said it together. Where were you? you? See, you left me hanging on that one. Because during so sorry, the story, yes, while yes, he was the talking carbon about carbon dioxide buzz, for beer drinkers. Right, no fizz in the beer. All of us. We, we all went, oh, no. It's and a gasp. Then, yeah. Now you, and then you just, like, left me out there. Sorry. Myself. I was focused. Not so what's up, Justin? Yeah. What's, uh. what's up with the weather? <laughs> what's up? Okay, well, uh, we've got some clouds out there at the moment. <laughs> We're looking at partly cloudy conditions and uh, temperatures. Well, we've made it uh, close to 90. We're at 89 at the airport. But Stinson and Kelly and Randolph are all registering 90 at this hour. Not a lot of a breeze either, so it's, uh, it's pretty warm and humid out there. The heat index is well into the 90s at this point. 91 Uvalde, 93 Carrizo Springs. We're up to 95 in Gonzales. It continues to be one of the hot spots. As we look across Bear County, as we said, 90 at Port S.A. and Stinson, 93 Pleasanton. And the dew point trend today, it started to fall into the 60s. So we're, we're in this range right here. But I, I think by the afternoon, you fall into the low 60s. Heat index would be anywhere from 101 to 103. Right now, the heat index is 94 here in town. But you get out to Gonzales, it's already 101. 95 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. 98, the current heat index in Pleasanton. And the case at 12 hour forecast, 98 degrees by 3 o'clock, 10% chance, very, very small chance this afternoon. And that goes to about 7 o'clock, 92 at 8 p.m. And then by this evening, we're falling back down into the 80s. Southeasterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. 
we saw some decent rain yesterday. The coverage just isn't going to be there today. It, it was nice to see we had a, a little bit more on the radar than we expected. And th that, that's a good thing. Uh, today, I don't think that'll be the case. Uh, you look at the satellite picture right now, we've got partly cloudy conditions across much of the area and a few showers trying to gather here around the Victoria area. But they're not having a whole lot of success as they work inland. And I, I don't foresee that much of this activity will, will make it uh, towards the I-35 corridor. We'll wait and see. By dinner time, there could be one or two showers around San Antonio. In general, a pretty unsettled pattern across the southeast. It's quiet where our ridge fire pressure is, which right now is sitting over parts of Colorado and Wyoming. Uh, but we're watching this area of unsettled weather right around Arkansas and then another in the Gulf of Mexico. And these two systems kind of combine bring their moisture with them and work into South Texas by Thursday. It'll be kind of a slow process, but I think Thursday to Friday we'll have some rain chances, some pop up showers and storms. It's still not going to be drought bust and rain. I mean, this is going to be hit or miss stuff and it's not going to be a, a lot of rain, but it is nice again to see at least a little bit on the radar. 10% chance of rain this evening and as we get into tomorrow, uh, there is a, another opportunity is some outflow boundaries come in from North Texas. If they can make it all the way down here, and this will probably be late tomorrow evening, then we could get a few showers and storms. But before that happens, tomorrow's going to be a hot day. I do think we get up to around 100. And then by Thursday, uh, a little bit more coverage, as we said. So systems come in about a 30% chance of rain both Thursday and Friday. Very quickly, let's talk about the tropics. Yesterday we mentioned we had a system out there the Hurricane Center was watching. Well, they're still watching it, but it's not as impressive as it once was. And now the Hurricane Center is only giving us about a 30% chance of development over the next five days. Still looks like this thing is going to try to curve back out over the Atlantic. Uh, if it does, it would have very little effect here in uh, the United States. But we need to wait and see. And, and as we get into further into hurricane season, which really it starts to pick up late August, early September, then uh, we'll likely be looking at more activity out there. 99 today, 100 tomorrow, 97 on Thursday, though. That cool down thanks to cloud cover and that chance of rain. 30% Thursday, Friday, 98 Saturday, 20% chance of rain, and then triple digits back in the forecast Sunday and Monday. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. And a mother says her baby is the spitting image of a famous actor, and the man himself is honoring his doppelganger. We'll explain after the break. After a tweeted photo went viral, actor Woody Harrelson found his look-alike. <laughs> it turns out <laughs> she's nine months old. CNN's Jeannie Moss has a story of <laughs> unlikely doppelgangers. Say cheese. Actor Woody Harrelson and this baby look like they're cut from the same fromage. The baby's Irish mom, Danny Greer Mulvena, tweeted, OK, but how does her daughter look like Woody Harrelson? though she typoed his last name. It's the smile they share, taken from Woody's performance in Zombieland Double Tap. The internet agreed on the resemblance. She does. Enough for your husband to be looking at you funny. Okay, so Woody's definitely not the father, but that didn't stop him from chiming in with what he titled an Ode to Cora. You're an adorable child, flattered to be compared. You have a wonderful smile. I just wish I had your hair. Come here, big fella. Just gonna take a little off the top. At least the zombie had something to take. Cora's mother was delighted to hear from Woody. You've made our day. Can't wait to show her this when she's older. You have another fan for life. Mom says she doesn't always look like Woody Harrelson with that typo again. It's just that when she does, she really, really does. Usually when smiling. Oh my God. Cora's mom told CNN that Woody's ode will definitely be on a birthday cake at some point. By then, she'll have even more hair. As Woody, playing his own twin, says... Seriously, is it weird to have more hair in your nose than on your head? Jeannie Mose, CNN, New York. <laughs> she really does look like him. Looks pretty good on the smile, for sure.
Yeah. The missing teeth. Oh, so cute. He's a cutie. And Just wait till she goes to the prom and parents pull that. Look who we thought you looked like. So. Oh, man. It'll live with her forever. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. We've got something really, really yummy today. Some fresh ceviche. Yes, Juan Pablo Cruz from El Jefe Baja Style is here. As you can see, he brought everything under the yes. sea. But you also have some signature micheladas. What makes these different? Yes, uh, we have a michelada here. The What makes it different on our michelada compared to everybody else, we are Japanese these peanuts to it and chaka chakas to be able to give it something to be able to set on the stomach after a good night of partying. <laughs> and that way you can keep partying, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I wish right. I knew that guy in college. Okay, <laughs> from ceviche to charcuterie, and Anna Miller from Hebrew Charcuterie is here, and oh my goodness, that is absolutely beautiful. But Thank a lot you. of times, I think, oh, I can do that. I'll yes. go to the store and buy all the meats and cheeses. You got a tip though, right? Right, so do not buy prepackaged meats and cheeses. You get a bigger bang for your buck at going to your local deli and requesting uh, specific amount. Okay, and to make it look really pretty, that nice little salami rose and milk, she's gonna teach us how to do that. And if you're looking to maybe go for some healthy options, you know, we got a new business in town, Queen Bee Juicery, that brought us some samples, and what is the blue one there, Mike? That says sea moss on it, and yes, as the name implies, that is sea moss. Yes, and we're gonna try that. See what that tastes like. And then you got a great coffee place oh, to go to as well. Yes, we are gonna take you to Road Tip Coffee Trailer for a sample of their menu. They also have a back to school market happening this weekend. Speaking of back to school, what's your favorite part about back to school? Let us mm. know, that and a lot more coming up on SA Live. These days, back to school shopping involves more than just notebooks and number two pencils. A lot of parents are also trying to find the best computers for their students. But there's some good news. You don't have to spend a small fortune to find a quality device. Plus, some stores and companies offer student discounts. Right now on KSAT.com, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at the computers that get the highest marks and how you can get them for the best prices. All right, it's 91 degrees outside, 99 this afternoon. Small chance for shower, otherwise a little better chance tomorrow evening. Our best chance though Thursday and Friday with some isolated showers and storms. Temperatures a little cooler, and that small chance lingers over into Saturday before things dry up, guys. Thank you, Justin. A lot for a lot on SA Live. You found something you're interested in. The micheladas. Always yeah, a see? good time. It's never too early for a michelada. <laughs> is it? Well, it's it's, fun. it is afternoon. It's fun. So we're good. SA Live starts right now. My dad always says, son's past the yard arm somewhere, Alicia. <laughs> Today <laughs> on SA Live, we make roses out of charcuterie and how you can learn how to do that as well. School spirit in full swing. The Jetson High School Diamonds Dance Team performed for us today ahead of the KSAP Big Skin Classic. And we're making a really healthy choice and checking out a new juicery in San Antonio and see what all the buzz is about. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. We're the Jetson Diamonds. And you're watching SA Live. Woo! Yes, that was the Jetson High School Diamonds uh, Varsity Dance Team. Yes, they, aren't they awesome? We're, we're going to get a preview of that. Some of the video you're going to be seeing here in a yes. minute, and between that and talking about Pixing Classic and yep. back to school All and everything, I mean, it's just, it's a really exciting time of year. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. Fiona will return next week, by the way, if you're wondering. Uh, yes, all right, now it's on to some seafood. Yep. Oh, yes, indeed. Seafood is popular for those hot summer days, and you can literally, literally call our first guest today the boss of Baja Style Seafood. And the boss himself, I guess we should call him El Jefe, since that's the name of the place. Yeah. Juan Pablo Cruz, <laughs> owner of El Jefe Baja Style, is here. And like Jen said, is there anything left under the water? Because you got it pretty much all right here. So uh, I think I brought it all. <laughs> Just Looks about. Like it. Okay, Baja Style Ceviche. Baja style ceviche, basically what it represents is the Baja Peninsula of Baja California, which is Tijuana, Ensenada, Rosarito, all the way to Cabo San Lucas. Okay. Honestly. And that's where you're from? Yes, is... Tijuana. Okay. Yes. So what are we starting with today? So we're starting basically with a cooked shrimp and crab ceviche right now. Um, we're going to add some salt and pepper to it. Real simple to make. 
The shrimp is already pre-cooked also too, so we add some salt, a little bit more salt. Oh, okay, a little bit more. And yeah. I love that you're bringing the Baja And style. then we're gonna give it about four to five twists on the pepper, so we make mm -hmm. sure we have enough pepper throughout the bowl. Now, a lot of times ceviche is uh, usually raw and then it cooks in the, the juices. Why is this cooked? Yeah, already? this one's pre cooked already. There's some people that are very skeptical. Okay. Lime. Oh, okay. uh, let's add the lime <laughs> first. Make sure that we flood it with the lime. Keep on pouring, squeeze it real hard. Okay. I'll let you know when to stop. The, re the reason why this one is cooked, some people are kind of skeptical about eating raw shrimp. They feel that it's raw, but they don't understand the full understanding that it's been cured already in the citrus to be able to kill all the bacteria on it. So those people that are a little bit uncomfortable with the raw one, we'll give them something like this. Okay. So right after we added that, we can add the onions and cilantro to it. And the whole point about ceviche too is freshness, freshness, and yes. more freshness, right? Yes, exactly. So we'll add the tomato right after mm -hmm. also too while he's stirring it. And well, you mentioned I, freshness because that's how it was, right? When yes, you're in Tijuana? The, the freshness, exactly. Here in Tijuana, where the way that I was taught, basically, we make everything in the moment that they ask for it. We don't believe in pre-making it ahead of time because our vegetables start breaking down, the citrus on it starts breaking the cucumber, the onion, and the tomato. No one wants a soggy ceviche. And then, simple as that. As simple as that, that's it. And we'll this build is, some this of these tostadas. So now we have some tostadas here. We can basically you, scoop, scoop some on top. So what we can do is, uh, if we can dump this inside to that big bowl oh. right there. Oh, okay. Into this one? Yeah. Yes, into that bowl. Oh, I was so just gonna like. Here, I'll grab it for you. I was just gonna do it like this. Here we go. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just dump it all in there. Oh, nice. And that's Super enough to fresh. feed a small army and or <laughs> a couple of people if you really like your uh, your ceviche. So we'll build our tostadas yes, and tell me what go. else you brought here. So basically these other ones that I brought to you here, this is a raw shrimp with octopus and then I brought you some fresh oysters from Baja California and then mm. I brought you some aguachile negro which is one of my very popular tostadas and then I got a shrimp cocktail right next to that and our famous michelada right after that to be able to wash mm. it all down. Mm. Okay, a handful of ingredients, so simple, mm, excuse me, but it's so good. Delicious. Yes. Thank With you. That. Thank and you. then this sauce, yes. um, you said that's one of the most popular, Yes, right? that's my black sauce. That's one of my very popular. I've actually had people offer me a nice chunk of money to be able to sell them the recipe and I still won't sell it. I think what, Mike tried to get it from you too. Uh, yes, <laughs> he did. What's, what's the trick to the, uh, the sauce? And this guy, uh, so a little this, bit of a kick this to sauce it too, has so. a combination of different chilies inside of it and a couple other ingredients. And that's as far as I go with my recipe on my sauce. That's it, that's all we're getting, right? I know you get the sauce. citrusy flavor, first of all. Yes. And then all of a sudden it's like So you get wham. a citrusy and then you get a little nice salt and mm -hmm. pepper flavor. And then right after that, mm -hmm. we get the rush of the heat right okay. after that. I feel that. That's He's amazing. describing it as I'm getting these different flavors. Yes, yeah, so but good. To, and then to wash it down, the michelada, right? So to wash it down, we'll end up having a michelada. So we'll add a little bit of cucumbers to this cup right here. And then we'll add some ice, obviously, to cool it all down. So we're adding some ice. And then what separates us from everybody else, we're going to add some Japanese Ooh. Uh, peanuts with some chaka chakas on it. And why the peanuts in there? The peanuts, basically the peanuts, what it helps out is, let's just say you had a long night, drinking all night, the next morning you're trying to eat something but the stomach is not really too happy with it. <laughs> so we drop some Japanese peanuts and start selling it down to party again. Start all over again. Yeah, Sounds like the right? voice oh. of experience yep. on this, right? <laughs> anyway. No, that's okay. So where, and where are you located? So we are located at 1221 Broadway Street, right outside Puerto Rosa Bar. So that's where our location is at, and you can okay. find us there Wednesday through Sunday. We start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday through Friday. Saturdays and Sundays, we actually open up at 1 in the afternoon. Yum. All right. That it was delicious. is delicious. We'll mm. say one for Alicia. She was commenting how great those look. All right. And for more information you can, on El Jefe Baja Style, you can head over to SALive.com and click the Ask Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code on your screen. Thank you so much. Oh, oh thank you guys. We've got something for the commercial bike. Meet you over there. So, <laughs> all right. Back to school. Uh, a couple of schools are already back to school yesterday mm -hmm. more today and Already. throughout the next couple of weeks we've got the pigskin classic coming up on the so 27th things. three of the best games in town to kick off the season mm -hmm. and we've got dancers on the show today what's your most exciting part about back to school yes about going back me for me it's getting back into the routine because it forces me to get more organized again and kind of get us back in the craziness of summer right you recover mm -hmm. from that 
and uh, and the kids are excited. Yeah, new teachers, all the things. What about you? That's uh, that was always the best part about it, you know, and yes. and school supplies and and seeing your friends again yes. that you haven't seen. Taking and, the pictures. Yeah, yes. find, find a new teacher. So yes. we want to know too, and also send in pictures. And this is going to be yes. now going on through pretty much the rest of August. We want to see all your back to school pictures, all the great things. Yes. If you have some old uh, school pictures of yourself mm -hmm. and some of your favorite moments, but let us know about yes. that. And yeah, lots of pictures of the cute little smiling faces. We want to share those. We might see them later in the show. All right. All right. Well, from summer eats to cooling off with some really good summer drinks. And of course, a young lady named Java Jen <laughs> is at it again. Yes, I uh, went out to Rose Hip Coffee Trailer to get a sample of their delicious Java drinks. And they have some great baked goods as well. Take a look. Rose Hip Coffee is one of the newest coffee trailers in town, and they're all about the delicious coffee, but also the made from scratch delicious desserts. We're gonna meet the owner and sample the coffee. And I'm now joined by the owner, Katie, here at your awesome coffee trailer. This is a dream for you. Tell me all about it. Yes, yeah, so I've always known that I wanted to go into the food business. I grew up baking with my mom, and that was always a passion of mine. And so mm. growing up, I knew I wanted to have a bakery. And as I got older and kind of figured out, you know, what are the costs involved of doing <laughs> all of that? I figured that a great first start would be opening a coffee trailer where I get to do coffee and I also get to do baking as well. Rose Hip Coffee is located a few blocks north of the McNay Art Museum near Katie's old neighborhood. It turns out the church parking lot is in the process of making this area into a community park. So the logo is actually a picture of one of my grandmas from back in the 50s. And so her wow. name was Rosa. And so I knew I had to have something Rose inspired as the name. And there's a book, Esperanza Rising, and in it, the abuela, she always makes tea out of rose hips. Oh. And she said, when you drink that tea, you can see all of the beauty that the flower ever saw. And so oh. that's what I wanted through this. Bumps, yes. I wanted this to be a place <laughs> the community could come together, they could share a cup of coffee, and they could just celebrate the beautiful parts of life together. Oh, I love the inspiration behind the coffee and the baked goods, which we are about to sample now. So you're going to make three drinks for us. Yes. And of course, we're going to have to try these pastries, the baked goods. <laughs> all right. First drink we're gonna make is the vanilla cinnamon latte. And so I make all of my own syrups, all made with different um, healing botanicals and also all organic. So the vanilla cinnamon is definitely one of the most popular. And as it gets hotter outside, it's wonderful to drink it iced. So put in the espresso in and some of the syrup. We get some milk. And we top it off with ice. Put the top down, give it a little shake, and it's done. The next one we're gonna do is the honey saffron latte. And so this one I think is really special. It has definitely a unique flavor to it, and it's something that you're probably not gonna find at a lot of other places. And it, I like it hot better than cold, actually, because it just feels like a warm hug. For this one, since we're doing hot, we're gonna steam the milk. Alright, so the next drink that we're going to make is a lavender sage, and so this is another one of our really popular drinks, and we're going to do this one iced, and this one has a very big floral punch, so while you're drinking it, even when you kind of add the espresso, you start to smell the lavender. All right, we saw the coffee drinks, and now it's time to check out the desserts. Hello. Yes, hello. So I've heard you love lavender, so yes. we've got the lavender sage latte for you. Thank you. Of Yum. Course. My favorite. And speaking of lavender, let's talk about these delicious desserts here, because I think this one yes. is, has some lavender in it. It does. So love biscuits. So this biscuit over here is a lavender lemon. Lavender lemon. And then we've got a cheddar black pepper biscuit and then a vanilla bean orange cardamom biscuit as well. Oh my well. goodness, oh my goodness. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I'm gonna try this, don't yes. mind me. Uh, let's talk about what we have over here. Of course, so over here, we have got a strawberry corn cookie. 
and it is filled with blackberry preserves and lime buttercream. Mm. And mm, then, sounds amazing. Yes, <laughs> and then over here we've got a coconut guava bun. So it's kind of the same dough as a cinnamon roll, mm -hmm. but it's filled with cream cheese spilling with guava and coconut. Are you going to dig in with me now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we're going to need some okay, more help yeah, with that. We need some help. Thank you. Yes. Lots of people here. All right. Again, salive.com. For more information, just head over to click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or you can scan the QR code right there on your screen. I'm going in. I'm going in for the biscuit because, you know, I love lavender. Oh, look at Somehow, wow. it magically appeared here, too, thanks to our producer, John. But we, yeah, we have a sample of some of the goodies. These fresh baked She goods. makes all of these. Yeah, so this is the hippie bar, mm -hmm. banana nut bread, uh, blueberry olive oil pound cake, and then the breakfast sandwich. You're going for the blueberry. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go for the hippie bar. By the way, they have a back-to-school market there this Saturday. So you can oh, wow. check that. Right? I know. I love pound cake. And with that olive oil in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, amazing. that's good. So mm. please go check her out. And uh, it's from 9 to 1 p.m. Vendors, coffee, food, crafters, and more. Right? That's really right tasty. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, when I say live continues, more fresh food. We're going to talk to a local charcuterie, making charcuterie, and talking to a local juice bar as well. Oh, yeah, we will be enjoying those charcuterie boards. Also, Queen Bee Juicery is here, and we are going to get a sample of their delicious juices and maybe try some of that sea moss gel. Stay with us.